All right, hey, hey, what's up, everybody? This is Gus Klee-Stimmis, back with another episode of My Gaming Diary on the Rounding Off Infinity Game Channel on YouTube. Writer on the uh, Gearworks.com tech blog, co-host, uh, editor, and producer of podcasts on the E2KG Network, so hopefully everybody's doing good this Saturday afternoon. So I feel much better for this game capture today uh, than I did for last night's game capture. Um... Still very congested from the allergy attack, but uh, I don't feel completely, absolutely miserable. And one of those reasons might be that I haven't had to fark all around with this setup uh, today. Um, after uh, disconnecting some of the stuff last night for shutdown and uh, reconnecting it this morning, um, it all came back out pretty well. Uh, no issues so far. So as you guys saw, I just upgraded my vehicle, so hopefully I'll be a little more competitive. Got the cop up here. So uh, today I am playing on the NVIDIA Shield Portable, and I'm specifically playing uh, Riptide GP Renegade, which is a 2016 game. Ah, it's the same mistake I made last night, and I'm still in fifth, so we'll be running this again probably. Nope. Maybe should I just restart this? Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and run down the hardware that is in play today. So as I mentioned, I'm playing on the uh, NVIDIA Shield Portable. And for video capture, I'm using the uh, Razer Ripsaw video capture device. So uh, this game has gotten a lot of bad press about not being as easy to set up as uh, Razer advertises it is. And I can attest that that's true. I uh, problems. Uh, so this is the first time that I've used it uh, on my uh to get ahead of us. It. 
I can just not. I cannot see the time these waves properly. It just gives me a huge amount of hesitation when I'm reading the wave right or whether or not I'm actually catching the top of it. Uh, so this is the first time that I've used, I've been using the Razor Ripsaw with my uh, backup multimedia editing machine. And it's worked actually really fine over there using Razor's proprietary tools that it makes available for download, uh, Razor Game Caster. And the drivers that come packaged in Razor Synapse. I could not get Gamecaster to work properly uh, on this machine, which is not a matter of specs. This machine actually has the better specs of the two machines. All right, so at that time. Unfortunately, it's the last lap. Ah! <laughs> yeah, so we'll be replaying this one. So I'm not sure what the issue is with the... Uh... No option to... Uh... I don't know if it gives me an option to replay it. I think it does, yeah. And you're seeing me having to dip because I have the webcam set up right in front of um, the display. So anyway, right, so I uh, set up the Razor Ripsaw over here for the first time yesterday. Uh, I'm using OBS for the software application to uh, configure and control it. and. Uh, Amazingly, uh, OBS actually works better than Gamecaster does. I'm really not a huge fan of the Gamecaster uh, application anyway, just because some of the configuration settings are not as intuitive as I would like. I was hoping to at least give it a go and see how it works. And it's, of course, a little uh, embarrassing for Razer, I think, that uh, a third-party open-source application... Oh, a cop just fell off his bike. The third-party uh, open-source application actually works way better than uh, its own fully integrated application does. Oh, nail it. There we go. Shot that turn. But surprisingly, first and second are packed really tight. I didn't realize second had caught first up. I wonder if first they had first made an error somewhere. Oh, so no ramp now. Oh, no ramp just moved. That stinks a lot. Back into second. We're gonna make a move on first. Playing the NVIDIA Shield Core. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Ah. Yes, got first. So the NVIDIA Show Portable has two modes you can play in when you connect it to an external monitor. Uh, you can play uh, in mirror mode where you can still see the display on the Shield's um, uh, organic display. Uh, or you can play in console mode. Now when you play in mirror mode you're locked to 720p because that's all the Shield Portable screen can display. Um, that's the max res of its uh, onboard display. I'm 
skill points. Now the only problem that causes is uh, some of these buttons, it's easier for me to use the touch screen to hit, like here on the uh, color scheme selection screen. So I can't afford top speed. So usually what I do for upgrades is I buy the most expensive upgrade I can afford. Uh, the most expensive upgrade in this pack, or where I am right now, is top speed that I can't afford. So I'm going to grab acceleration. That's now maxed out. And go ahead and start. So this video should look a little sharper than uh, last night's game capture, which I played in mirror mode and therefore captured at 720p. Uh, for webcam today, I'm using the... I'm using the uh, Ape Man Victor uh, 1080p action cam, which is a little uh, boxy cam that looks like a uh, GoPro, but is way less expensive. So this camera is only uh, 50 bucks, and it's really amazing in terms of its versatility and what it can pull off for such an inexpensive camera. Uh, I really don't know why anybody would buy a GoPro at this point, unless you're a professional who really needs to be able to. Um, shooting 4K or something. Alright, I think these are actually lighter than GoPros maybe, so if you were looking to uh, hook this up to a drone, I would highly recommend using this instead. Ah! I thought I had enough room to pull a double move. Uh, I did level up there. Uh, see if I can get this down first. Uh, for voiceover commentary, I'm using the Samson Go mic. Actually, I'll see if I can show that to you here. So it's got a little extra cable length. Hopefully you're able to uh, see it there. It's a little, uh, it's a little mic that's kind of made for you to be able to um, have no idea what I'm doing to how I look in the camera now as far as positioning goes. But hopefully I'm still in it. One of the things I really like about the Eight Man picture is a uh, super wide viewing angle, so I can almost put the camera anywhere and I should still be in the picture, even though I don't have a when it's in PC mode. Um, I, I can't. You know, it doesn't have a back display, so I can't tell where the camera's pointing. So yeah, so this camera, um, well, it does have the capability to hook up to a PC uh, over USB and appear like a webcam. So no need to use a Blackmagic uh, web presenter or anything like that. Just natively has that ability on board, which is really awesome. So. There are not very many cameras that work both as uh, standalone cameras and then can appear as a webcam also. Ah, I missed the jump. Maybe. Nice. Ah, fifth. Alright, I'm going to try playing it one more time, and then, uh, what this seems to be saying is I don't have the speed, because my top speed isn't maxed out. I, may, I might also be because I'm driving the Stingray and not the Typhoon. The typhoon might have a little more oomph to it. And then for uh, headphones today, I'm using my uh, Logitech G330s, uh, and I'm using headphones because obviously the Samsung Go mic is an open-air mic, and I need to get the in-game audio uh, out of the wind so the Samsung Go mic doesn't get bleed over. I hate this little section here through the little fountains.
Now I have a few extra skills. I can never remember the stick movements for the special moves though. I'm gonna have to go remind myself of some of the special skills to um, pull off some additional tricks to make it past this. Uh, let's see. Well, I guess and this is what's weird. This thing doesn't have like a garage menu, so we'll play the main. Campaign character impact. Then we'll go with uh, Typhoon. Let's learn some skills and try and try and actually remember the stick movements to pull them off. So I have up to level five skills now. So let's start with those. Scratcher is out and up down. Okay, now I got one more skill point. Uh, I didn't know you had persistent or passive skills too. Let's try and keep that special move in mind out and up down. Paint decals. run our upgrades. I think this is the thing that's going to be the big difference. We'll boost the top speed. So I can't afford anything else. I can almost afford acceleration, but not quite. So this is the third game in the series that I've played. Um, I played Riptide, Riptide GP2, or Riptide GP, Riptide GP2, and now Renegade. I've always had a ton of fun with these uh, Riptide. I mean, the, this franchise has been around since the iPad came out. So it kind of, it's, its roots are in mobile gaming, uh, although... Let's see if I can... Well... I'm not going to pull this stuff for move yet. It's a lot faster, so... Get a little out of control. Ah, man, that's probably... That's... I should have tried the first super move. The hardest part of this thing is remembering where the super jumps are. Okay, here we go. Out and up, down. Wow! Okay, I'll take that. As I learn more uh, stunts and stuff and upgrade the bikes, upgrade the wave runners, I might come back and play that one again. Okay. So I tend to like to always switch things up every round. No skill points. So as I mentioned uh, on the last game capture, uh, one of the things that always uh, enamors me with this game, or this system, is I always sleep on it, right? I always think when it's sitting there, I'm always like, ah, why do I even bother having the shield portable? I don't play it enough. I should just let it go, and, uh, and then I always get on and play games like this, and I'm like, oh, wow, this is really, really need to play this more. Uh, 
no, 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 no. Uh, bad call. Not at seventh. I've ever realized that there's a mini map in this game. <laughs> I don't really know how much good it would do me. I don't know if I have the wherewithal to be looking at the mini map and uh, trying to keep my eyes on the track. Water modeling on this is really good, and you can actually see submerged objects as you're going around the corners. Still have some boost left. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna get it in this race. So up next on the channel, uh, I'm going to be playing the Nintendo 3DS. I haven't decided what I'm going to be playing on it yet. But uh, hopefully I will, I will probably be using the same, well, I'll be using a slight variation of this setup. I think what I'm going to do is use the um, the 8-man Victure. Uh, I'm going to play, just do a replay. Let's see, can I get one other upgrade? Yes, upgrade the boost. That might actually be the game changer. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is take the 8-man picture, which, like I said, is just incredibly versatile due to its small size and wide uh, camera angle, wide lens angle. I think I'm going to use the 8-man picture and set it up. That's my capture device with OBS. Which I believe will work fairly well. So much difficulty with moving these waves. Tough one. 
What? I have no idea what that was. No, we flubbed it. I haven't lost any of the boost that you got from those stunts. All but a little. Sides of these corners to keep it from coming out of the inside. There we go. I'm not sure why it reset me back at the... Alright, so I'm gonna go back and just grind a couple races, see if I can uh, improve my original standing. kind of lost my awareness on where exactly I am in the campaign. I believe that let me get 
away with that one. My guesses that I have left the competition are behind. So you can definitely feel the difference in the uh, handling upgrade there. Straight up sprint. Nice, no laps. Alright folks, that's going to do it for me. Thanks so much for joining in on this episode of My Gaming Diary on the Rounding Off Affinity Gaming Channel on YouTube. Once again, my name has been Agassi Lee Stamets from GearWorks.com and the E2KG Network Channel on YouTube. Please go over to the E2KG Network Channel and check out all the podcasts that we do. We do two gaming podcasts a week. Uh, one, a deep discussion show on Tuesday nights at uh, 9.15, I think is our new time. And the uh, second show of the week is on Thursday nights at 10 p.m. Both of those times are Eastern. Um, and the Thursday night show is E2KG in 30, which is our... 30-minute news show where we try to run down anywhere from 6 to 9 of the top or most interesting news stories in the gaming industry and try and get you merrily on your way in 30 minutes or less. Uh, then you can also check out Dave Petchy and I on our entertainment series. We have uh, in the past covered uh, Dark Matter uh, on a podcast called The Dark Hypotheses. Uh, that season is over now and right now we are um, watching and reviewing uh, the Netflix original series, The Defenders. So uh, please head over there and check those out. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to the various channels, but um, for now I'll especially ask you to check out the things on Rounding Off Infinity, and if you like the video or see some things that you think I could improve on, um, by all means uh, dislike it and leave me some comments so I know what I can do to improve. Uh, again, the shtick of the Rounding Off Infinity channel is uh, I review a lot of different hardware, um, both gaming hardware and video capture and streaming hardware, and try and cover a little bit of that each episode um, as well as some commentary on the game that I'm actually playing, mainly so I can let uh, would-be streamers and uh, YouTube channelers, uh, the various pieces of equipment that are out there and the software components that they can use to, uh, to tool their business. So thanks again for joining in. That's going to do it for me. I'm out of here. Oh, and remember to join me for the next episode for something on the Nintendo 3DS XL. Thanks again.